Um, let me just say at the very beginning, I'm going to talk about a couple of things before I get on to Fist of the North Star. So let me just put down below, maybe at this time, if you just want to, uh, you know, have me talk about Fist of the North Star, it'll be at that time. But a few things as I begin this, um, a couple of updates with myself. I need to say um, that I'm going through kind of a new era of my life. Uh, I was just diagnosed by my doctor as having um, as having diabetes, and so it's come to the point where now I've got to you know start taking my my health a lot more seriously. Uh, it's something I didn't want to get to, but I'm finally here, and uh, you know it's it's not that big of a, a problem. It's just it it kind of lets me know in a very clear way, in a very, you know, undeniable way that every decision that you make in life uh, matters. And I haven't been taking it too seriously. And I want to take it more seriously. In fact, I want to take my channel more seriously. Um, I want to hold myself to making more videos. And I want to make, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold myself to at least a video every month. I know it's a very low bar, but it's a higher bar than I've been doing. So I want to at least have that as something. Um, and I'm thinking that I'm going to start making videos that have a, you know, maybe I'll just have a question and I'll use the video to answer that question and I'll kind of explore some sort of philosophical topic. And probably those topics are going to be mostly, I mean, they're going to be whatever I want them to be, of course, but I'm thinking that for me personally, it would be best if I focused my efforts, my time, um, what I'm best at is for young men um, because I think of myself as something of kind of like an uncle for all of you young guys out there I'm now 40 and I think that a lot of the things that I talk about it would just pertain much more to young men than to young ladies so young ladies if you're out there I'm glad that you're along but that's what they might be so kind of get ready for that in the future um, also, I really, really have to pick up doing more of the video game playthroughs, like Let's Plays that I've done. Um, I've got a Crystallis one that's been there since 2015. It's been there, like, waiting for five years. And it's not that I don't want to do it. I love to do it. Um, I'm going to tell the story when I actually pick it up of what happened and why. But I'm just letting you know, the audience, that I'm going to try to do these things more. I'm going to hold myself to, to making more videos. So hold me to it, okay? Leave, leave questions, leave comments, kind of complain to me. I'm also probably going to make something. Um, I'm right there at the point where I'm about to get my first thousand subscribers, or like a thousand subscribers, like in total. And I'm very excited about that, and I want to see things kind of go in more. So I'll probably add like a title card, just something to let everybody know that, uh, you know, your decisions all also make uh, a big deal. And I want you to... Again, I don't really spend time saying this, but I think that I really need to say it in every video. I want your comments. Um, I want you to subscribe. I want you to leave likes. I want you to, you know, help me grow my channel so I can reach as many people as possible. Anyway, let's get talking about Fist of the North Star. So, it's been such a long time, I know. Um, feedback I got from you guys was great. Uh... You know, people were really happy that I'm, you know, reviving the series. And again, with your help, with your likes, with your comments, I think that it can be shared to a much bigger audience. And if you guys liked it, you know, let people know and let people know what it is. And um, I'll try to keep making those. Um, it's really great to be back doing them, but there is a little bit of sad news at the beginning. Um, for those who have seen my first couple, I've shouted out a channel on YouTube that I really, really like. Uh, there's a guy named Un. Uh, his channel is called Unplayed a Thing, and he's the one who got me into Fist of the North Star. Um, if you go back into his channel, one of his earliest playthroughs was the the Sega Master System Hokuto no Ken, and you know his commentary, everything about what he was doing, just really got me into Fist of the North Star, and I started reading them, and I started really liking them. And again, that was God. It's already been like like ten or so years. So it was like maybe two thousand seven or eight, like when I first went to Japan, that it kind of got me into it. But recently, um, 
I went to his channel and it seems that uh, he's he's out. He's out of the the game. Uh, let's play making business. He just, um, you know, if you go through, you know, his last recording, he said that it was just getting a little bit too much for him. Maybe he's having some stress, and it's hard for him to kind of, you know, go through uh, the process of making videos. If you yourself have never made videos, it is a bit of a process. It can be very, um, like, time-consuming. I mean, if, of course, when you're making something, it's very fun, and I think that that's really important, is to actually get out, you know, what it is that you feel, and to make something. But it does take something out of you, and it might not seem like it, you know, to the person just watching the video, but to the person making it, it does take a lot, and so he said that he's going to get out, I respect his wishes, I love his back catalog, it's a lot of fun for me to go through and see a lot of these games that I never would have picked up, and so I think that it's kind of up to, you know, people like me who, I just remember there was a time when I was in Japan, and I was feeling extremely lonely, because I'm there with my wife, of course, who I love a lot, but I'm, you know, marked with this face, I'm obviously the foreigner. And a lot of people, they just won't talk to you, even if you know how to speak Japanese reasonably. A lot of them just won't talk to you. And not only that, there's a lot of cultural things about living in Japan, which were very, very tough. A lot of things I, I outlined in videos I did previously. And it just lets me know, or at that time, uh, watching his videos really got me through things because they were so peaceful and so fun and just a good way to spend time. And so I think that if I can do something similar to that with my own channel, with my own kind of video playthroughs, then I'll be happy with that. If I can, you know, pass on that feeling that he gave me to somebody else, I'll be happy with that. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, why it took me so long to make the next... Uh, Fist of the North Star retrospective. Um, as I was saying before, there are some stresses that come along with, you know, making a channel for YouTube. And you probably know this yourself, but, you know, not all channels are created fairly, and it's not necessarily a fair game. Uh, it's a lot of work, no matter what you put on. And, you know, I'm not perfect at it, but I've gotten better as I've, as I've gone along. Uh, but it still takes me several hours to do these things, right? And it, I get a very modest, you know, number of views. I, I for me, it's not, it's not 100% about the view count. But the view, but the view count, it can't be ignored, right? And if you're breaking your back making these things, and you compare that, sometimes I'll go on and I'll see a video of Fist of the North Star, where literally all somebody did somebody who does not own the copyrights they simply clipped out you know one clip of you know Kenshiro saying omae wa mo shindeiru or something like that and they'll put that little thing on there and it will get literally millions of views <laughs> so, like you know what somebody did that took no effort and they took somebody else's work and they didn't even bother like transforming it they didn't bother you know putting it together in any kind of artful way, they just literally took one clip and put it there, and it has more views than anything that I've done that I've put so much time into. And so again, I don't want to seem like I'm whining. I don't mind the fact that my my channel is you know small and growing. It's just that those kind of things it really makes it hard to you know put so many you know hours into making a video that very, very few people see. So that's another reason I really want to, you know, make the plea to you, the audience member. If you do like what I do, then please help me get it out there. Um, you know, subscribe if you're not, you know, leave a comment. That's the best thing for me because I like to hear what you guys have to say. And another thing that really keeps me going is, you know, <laughs> like you're a YouTube viewer, YouTube comments are typically a cesspool. Right? Nobody feels like they have any obligation to you as a person. They don't feel like, hey, I have to make this person happy. I have to, you know, I have to lie to them and say, like, what I don't think. People are generally very honest with their YouTube criticism because, like, what are you going to do about it? You know, somebody calls you a name or, like, says, oh, I hate your video. Go kill yourself or whatever. You know, they can be perfectly honest. 
there's there's no obligation to, to to lie, you know. And so, taking it on the chin that way, I I've gotten overwhelmingly good comments from people. In the the years that I've done this, I've literally gotten maybe like two or three comments that I would say were kind of nasty, and the overwhelming majority, the hundreds of them, have been really really good, you know. There might be one person who complains about, you know, oh, you said this, but it was actually that. Or, you know, whatever the whatever the uh, problem is, it's really easily taken care of, and it's not something to stress over. But I'm blessed in the fact that I've got a small, you know, smaller audience, and what they say, they're being, I think they're being perfectly honest. They don't have to, you know, leave a comment if they don't want to. And most of them are extremely, extremely kind, and I really appreciate that. So, that's what kind of gets me back into doing it. And so I'm glad, you know, for the people who, you know, watch it, who appreciate it. And, again, I'm here. I'm plugging away. I've just got my job to deal with, which is a full-time thing. That was also my dream, so I'm glad that I've got, you know, my, my life is just doubly, triply blessed. And I'm very happy, and part of what I want to do... It seems to me that I have this excess of uh, peacefulness, and I want to spread that as much as I can. So you can help me do that. Anyway, um, one thing that I was really happy to hear, lots of people said that they loved the Arc, work, uh, Arc System Works arcade game. They loved, they loved the Fist of the North Star arcade game. Again, that was only like released in Japan for the PS2. But they played it perhaps in the arcades, you know, in some places in America. But most Americans missed out on it, and it was such a fantastic game. So a lot of you guys have said, you know, like, that's what you guys like the most. For me personally, you know where I first saw that? I saw it, like, I, there was a time when I was, when I was, like, uh, downloading a bunch of Mugens. And, like... I've got like maybe one or two that are my core that I, you know, I play a lot, or I'll just have them play themselves. If you don't know, a Mugen is like this basic uh, fighting game engine where you can kind of plug in assets from other fighting games. Um, you know, you could take characters from, you know, older. But again, it's, it's like old school. It's not. It's nothing like really, really like updated to like the modern ones. It's kind of like old school fighting games. And you can take stages, you can take characters, you can take music, all of that, and you can put it together in this basic, you know, like, Mugen uh, fighting game. And I, the first time that I saw the Fist of the North Star arcade game, it was the Mugen version of it. And so when I was seeing it, I was like, man, this is awesome. You know, great character animations, like, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, this has to have been taken from something, because that's how you make a Mugen, right? You get the assets from a different game, and you put it into the Mugen, and you just, you know, do it as you will. So it must have come from something else, but for a while I didn't know what it is. And I did more research, and I found that game. And I was like, why have I never heard of this awesome game? That's what it was, you know? It was only released for the Japanese PS2, so Americans missed out on it. But man, it is a beast. And when I got it, um, I have a sister-in-law... Uh, my wife's sister who lives in Japan. And those kind of things, they're very easy if you have that kind of connection. You know, all I have to do is tell her, go to the local book off. Because the book off has a great big, uh, you know, extensive library of pretty much everything. They get used games, they get all these, you know, things. They keep it so greatly, like, categorized. And so it was no deal at all for her to just go to the store, buy one, and send it to me. And so that's why I have one. I know a lot of us don't actually have that kind of, you know, like, family connection. Um, but man, if you do, it was such a beast. It was, number one, really awesome to play. Then it's got the tutorial to tell you how to play if you're a low-level player, you know. Then it's got all these, like, fun videos. It's got... One thing that I didn't mention in the retrospective, um, another really awesome uh, thing that it has in the extras is it has uh, all the other Fist of the North Star games up to that point. I didn't actually end up using their footage. I like I found my own like from different channels on YouTube, and like some of them I just you know took uh, videos of myself playing. But it had this you know this cat this category this catalog of all the Fist of the North Star games that were made up to that time. So I could kind of at least use that basically. But man, it's such a great game, and I'm so glad you know 
most of us liked it. Um, I could just go on and on about all the games that I played and how fun they were. I really liked that arcade game, the one you know where you like like punching in real life. I have yet to play that. I've seen it a couple of places myself, but every time I see it, it's always like out of order. I guess that that kind of machine it gets out of order quick. Um, because those kind of whack-a-mole games, you know, some kids are always going to, like, hit them too hard and mess them up. Even though they are made to be hit, right? Eventually, some kid's going to break it, so... I've never seen a functioning one face-to-face. -face. I've only seen, like, videos of them, and it looked like a lot of fun. If you could just do it with a controller, like, play that game with a controller, that would be at least something, you know? But that looked like a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to try to get my hands on the uh, the Jump Force, the newest one, that has Kenshiro in it. Some of the other ones, like the one that was for the Nintendo DS, I think it was like like J-Star's Victory or something like that. I, that game, it's so talky. <laughs> like you, you know, you, you fire it up, but it's like you have to go through this dialogue and that dialogue, and you know, it's this tutorial, that tutorial. You're just like, okay, come on, come on, come on, can I just go? It's not like normal fighting games. You know, normal fighting games, you just put a quarter in, you just turn it on. There's a selection of characters, you just pick who you want to, and then you go. But that particular game, it's not so easy. And it's kind of annoying, you know? But, uh, anyway. Another one that I obviously really liked, because I kept mentioning it, was that Sega Master System game. I just think it's so simple, and so great, and just so easy to play through, right? It's, and it, and it just does exactly what you would want to do from a Fist of the North Star game. You get to play as Kenshiro, you get to go through all the bad guys, and if you're familiar with um, the source material, it's like, oh, I know who that guy is, and I know the story about that, and now here I get to kick his ass, and you know. It's just fun and a simple I love that, and I think that's why I love retro games so much. You know, I think I'm much more into retro games than anything else. I find myself, like, going back and, like, playing all these older games. Um, in the summer, I played... I mean, I played, I, I played certain remakes, because, you know, you do kind of yearn for some sort of new controls, but they don't always improve on the past, you know? So I played the remake of um, Secret of Mana. And Secret of Mana... It has, like, one of the best soundtracks, if not the best soundtrack that I've ever heard. Uh, one of the best. Probably Final Fantasy Tactics still slightly edges it out. But it's really, really great. And the new one, it was so glitchy. Like, I don't know if everybody else found that, but I found the new one. I was playing it with my son. And it was so glitchy. It was so annoying. And I was like, this is supposed to be the new one. You know, this is supposed to be the one that, you know... Everything about it should be upgraded. And there were a lot of fun upgrades. Like, you could, you know, ha hear the party members, like, talking back and forth with each other. Um, which the old game didn't have. But, I don't know, it's... I just like those older games, you know? So I think that I'll probably also end up doing pretty soon the, um... You know, the, the last battle on the Sega Genesis. The Hokotono Ken for the Sega Genesis. Because it's just so simple plain and fun you know so I've got and I have to confess I did not finish um, uh, Lost Paradise but I do have it and you know it's just waiting for me to kind of get around to it um, but it's I find it so hard to get into new things like no matter how great they are you know like does anybody out there have you have you also got the Final Fantasy 7 remake because over the summer, it was also a project with me and my son that I played Final Fantasy VII from tip to tail with him um, because I wanted him to, to know that and to be ready. So we, we played Final Fantasy VII all the way through. Then I showed him the, uh, the movie, Advent, Advent Children. And then we tried to get into... I tried to get him into um, uh, Crisis Core for the PSP. And he liked it, but, you know... he started playing other games that he wanted to play too. And then I I can't help it, like, we're trying to make our way through the new one. Graphically speaking, it's so awesome. You know, everything is an upgrade, everything just, like, looks fantastic. But for some reason, we just can't get into it so much. I don't know why. Maybe I just need to, you know, put video games off for a little bit, and then maybe I'll kind of come back to it, 
you know, like, roaring back. But in either case, making this, you know, this recent Fist of the North Star uh, part, it was, it was a lot of fun. And it got me back into making videos, and, you know, I'll be here, I'll be here to stay, and I'm going to keep on, you know, making them. And I want to hold myself to at least something per month, so. Uh, one thing before I leave you with uh, the impression. <laughs> this is a funny one. Okay, so, let me outline it like this. I have heard your feedback loud and clear. Uh, the number one feedback I've gotten through every single one of my videos on Fist of the North Star, I've heard in so many videos. And it's not like a negative thing, it's just like something that you as the audience are trying to tell me. And so I don't want you to feel ignored, but I'm just telling you right now, I'm going to ignore this particular feedback. Can you guess what it is? I think that you might all know. Okay, because I hear this in every single one. They keep on saying, that intro is really, really long. Can you cut it down? Well, uh, I know it's long, but for me, and again, like, just don't get mad at me on this. For me, it's super, super simple if you want to skip it, right? If, if you've seen them all, it's the same amount of time, it's about two minutes, so you can skip through it if you don't like it. The last part is coming, you know, fairly soon. It should be, you know, it should be done within a month or so. And I have to warn you, <laughs> you're not going to like this. But, I have to stick to my guns, because it was the plan from the very, very beginning. That song is going to get even longer. <laughs> so... The, the version that is there now, again, that was like when I was like first experimenting with just how to edit in the first place. And, you know, like, I found out some ways to edit, and I, I edited that song down to its, you know, essential core. But the song is about five minutes. And so for the finale, I had always planned on making it the entire length of the song. So just be warned, be warned in advance. When part eight comes out, it's going to have a, a full five minute long song. And I know you're going to hate that, at least the ones who have told me, you know, make the song long or make the song shorter, make it shorter. It's going to be longer. So again, don't get mad at me. I don't want to, uh, you know, be contentious about this, but I, that's just how I always planned it. And so just get ready for that. But again, you can skip over it if you don't like it. But for those, you know, who have come from the, the very beginning to the very end, uh, that's what I've always planned. So just be aware. It's going to be the full song. I'm going to make a longer intro. And again, I don't want you to think that I just ignore your feedback because that's the number one feedback that I've been getting. But that's always been the plan. So just... <laughs> just skip over it if you don't like it but be warned okay um, you know, I appreciate you being here I appreciate you listening to me and I'm going to leave you uh, with an impression that I have to kind of preface this impression I am definitely biting off more than I can chew um, so it's not going to be as uh, good as the other ones I mean if I can call myself good for the other ones uh, the other impressions, I've gotten some feedback, and they said, yeah, good job. This particular one is not going to be the, as great a job. I'm going to do my best. But I'm going to give you an impression of Raul. Okay, so Takashi Ukaji, the voice of Raul. I can't, <laughs> he has this rumble to his voice that I can't quite emulate, but I'm going to do my best. Okay? So, here it is. I'm going to leave you with my impression of Raul. Mite kurete arigatou gozaimasu. Sayonara. よいかみのもの、敵を恐れ、力のないものは前に出よ。この剣王がこの場で死を与えよう。よいかみのもの、敵を恐れ、力のないるものは前に出よ。この剣王がこの場で死を与えよう。それだな。<笑><笑>